Hi, I'm Iris. I'm six years old. I'd like to read you a book if you don't mind. The Great Kapok Tree. A Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Ling Cherry. This book is dedicated to the memory of Chico Mendes, who gave his life in order to, pre to preserve a part of the rainforest. That's sweet. In the Amazon rainforest, it is always hot. And in that heat, everything grows and grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The canopy is a sunny place that touches the sky. Way up there. The canopy, wait, <laughs> I read that already, sorry. <laughs> the animals that live there like lots of light. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory down there on the ground the animals that live in the understory like darkness really dark like when you close your eyes and do this i can't see anything they're silent snakes curl around hanging the vine Graceful jaguars, watch and wait. And in this steamy environment, the great kapok tree shoots up through the forest and emerges above the canopy. This is the story of a community of animals that live in one such tree in the rainforest. Ta-da! Now, the story. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking bears and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet. As the creatures watched, the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he had he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the whole, rang through the forest. Whew. The wood of the tree was very hard. Whack! Chop! 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 The man wiped this the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon, the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. Maybe he Maybe he even snored. The boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down to its trunk where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor. 
this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, this hive, my hive, is in the, this K-pop tree. And I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. And this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the K-pop tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You'll chop down one tree, then, co then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and, well, die. And there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become, well, a desert. A, a toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew, flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut, cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only, back, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he picked in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. Many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great K-pop tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of, a, of the tree because his spotted coat blended into the dappled lights and shadows of the other story. No one had noticed him. Now he leaped down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, this K-pop tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen! If you cut down the forest, you'll, you'll destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought of the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had become had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now she only now did she reach the ground, plodding ever so slowly to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice, Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroyed the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomomo tribe who lived in the rainforest kneeled over, over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, 
Please look upon us with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him, staring, were the creatures who depended on the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were! The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amid, amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume oops, of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sounds, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood, stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as through to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated, like this. <sighs> then he dropped his axe with a little thump, like that, and walked out of the rainforest. I think we should think of other living creatures, and that's why I'm going to protect the rainforest.